Humans have been on the Indian subcontinent for a very long time, from what we know at least 50,000 years. But recent work on the analysis of ancient DNA is revealing who the ancestors of people living in that region today really were. And it's very politically controversial. For some people, Indian history is all about the British, the Mughal, the Turkic, the Sena, the Pala, Mauryan, Emperor Ashoka, as if history is just about kings, emperors and their wars. But didn't all this happen just 2000 years ago? What came before that? Oh yeah, the Aryans came from the north, those horse riding mighty Aryans with pale skin, still today considered the highest caste in traditional Hindu societies. The same Aryans who even today are used as a political weapon for right-wing nationalists, not just in India, but also in Europe and America. But we'll talk about that later. We tend often to think of history as what's written or recorded, but that's only about 5,000 years old. In a groundbreaking study published in 2018, geneticists teamed up with experts from all sorts of disciplines to analyze the ancient genomes of human skeletons who lived in the Indus Valley civilization and the surrounding areas we call Afghanistan, Iran, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan today. They compared this ancient genetic data with live DNA samples from 246 different groups living in Indian subcontinent today. I'm sure you all know that modern humans, Homo sapiens, first evolved in Africa about 300,000 years ago. These early ancestors left Africa about 70 to 80,000 years ago, and by 50,000 years ago, they'd already started living in the Indian subcontinent. About 12,000 years ago, farming developed in the Fertile Crescent of Western Asia and spread out. Many thought these Iranians brought farming to India, but a more recent study says that's probably not true. Agriculture might have arisen independently or spread through cultural contact. But these massive Iranian populations migrating to the north of India mixed with indigenous hunter-gatherer communities who were already living there. And this mixed population created the famous Indus Valley Civilization in the areas known today as ancient Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. The genetic analysis of 4,500 year old human skeletons from ancient Harappa found no genetic markers at all linked to the Aryan people. This was big and politically controversial, partly because today's Hindu nationalist movement in India draws heavily from theories about higher caste Aryans being the people who built the original Indus Valley civilization. During British colonial times, they had this theory called the Aryan invasion theory. This idea that the more advanced Aryan warriors destroyed the less advanced Indus Valley civilization. Although this theory had been disproved for a while, this study confirmed that it was wrong once and for all. What does this mean? Well, not only was the great Indus Valley civilization not built by the great Aryans, we can't even give them credit for its destruction either. What likely happened is that changes in river patterns and reduced rainfall caused the civilization to break up slowly. But uh, history is pretty boring sometimes, right? Now, soon after that, the Aryan migration did start from the steppes in Central Asia. And Aryans did begin to mix with the local North Indian population. The mixture of the steppe ancestry and the local northern Indian farmer ancestry has been named Ancestral North Indian, or ANI for short. And the people that moved south before mixing with the Aryans are named the Ancestral South Indians, or ASI. But it's not that the ANI and the ASI populations got separated genetically, exactly the opposite. They kept mixing and mingling, which is why you see a varied range of mixture of ANI and ASI in the Indian subcontinent today. But because of the caste system and endogamy, that is, only marrying into your own community, which came largely from people following the Hindu faith, you'll see more of the ANI genetic markers in the north and more of the ASI genetic markers in the south of modern day India. The people from the Indian subcontinent also mixed with the previously established Tibetan Burmese and Austroasiatic populations from the east. They then again mixed with the Arabs, the Turks, the Mughals, and later the Europeans. But these groups did not have their genes spread all across the population of the subcontinent as it did with those early Iranian farmers. This recent data is not at all good news for the Hindu nationalists. According to the out of India theory that many of them subscribe to, the Aryans originated in India, then ventured out and built higher civilizations in Asia and Europe. On the other side, in hard-right nationalist groups in the West, some of them claim that these 
pure Aryans actually originated in Europe and are their ancestors, claiming that the Aryans were particularly suited to building higher or better civilizations. But the facts are pretty simple. There is no pure race. The Aryans were just one more group of people from Central Asia, just like thousands of other groups in human history. The human species has hardly stayed in one place. We've continuously moved, spread all around the world and bred with each other. All of us are nothing but mixes. Genetic studies have shown we're not just mixed within our species, but we've even bred with other extinct human species like the Neanderthals and the Denisovans. So what unites us today is that we are just one species, Homo sapiens. And both scientifically and morally, there is no basis for discrimination based on race, caste or religion, just as there's just no basis for the concept of purity or excellence of one arbitrary group over another. This ideology has been weaponized time and time again for political gain or economic interest. But like all ideas, they only persist if we allow ourselves to remain ignorant. The genetic analysis of 4,500 year old skeletons from ancient Harappa found no genetic markers at all linked to the Aryan people. Markles. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know why I keep saying Markles. Okay, let's do it.